Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Spiritual Spotlight series. Today, I am joined by the amazing Kelly Dawn. Kelly Dawn is an intuitive tarot reader and a manifestation coach for spiritual entrepreneurs. And what I love is that she really helps them to connect more deeply with their power to align them to the next level in business. I know that there's other things that Kelly does as well, and we're going to definitely going to touch on that. So Kelly, thank you so much for being here today. Uh, thank you so much for having me. So I know that one of your things, I love the fact that you are um, a manifestation mindset coach, because I do feel like right now, especially in this day to age, a lot of people's mindsets are really like stuck, like, you know, like you said, in a paradigm or in a kind of a, a loop that runs around. How did you, and maybe I have to take it back to the beginning and maybe I'm, I'm jumping around right now, but how did you kind of get into kind of mindset work? Did you get into more of your intuitive work first, or did you get into mindset work first? So it was definitely the mindset work first. I come from a background where I worked a uh, nine to five. It was the family business. And I had ticked off all of the boxes of what like success was supposed to look like. I had the house, the car, I went to college and I was miserable. And I had like no reason to be from the outside. And I didn't understand like, I've done all the things. I have the money. I have this. I have that. Like, what's wrong with me? And I spent about 16 years in that job and I didn't want to be there. And I also ended up numbing myself with shopping and sex and drugs and alcohol. And I had no awareness whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Um, then I got into raw foods. I used to have eating disorders and I would dive into all these different diets and detox things back in my twenties. And I came across raw foods and it was through that channel that I found out about manifestation. I watched the secret. I'm like, what is this all about? And then to make a long story short, I eventually left that job and I started my own business back in 2013. And when I started that business, I went down the rabbit hole with uh, personal development, law of attraction. I was binging on all of like the, um, like Brian Tracy, Tony mm -hmm. Robbins, and then as well as um, Joe Dispenza, all those yeah. people from The Secret. And I was starting to see a lot of major shifts and changes in my own life with the business. And I had previously healed a lot of my own internal things through doing that work beforehand. And I also... <laughs> It's like a huge list of things that I feel I moved through. Um, I was suicidal uh, when I was younger. And when I learned that my thoughts were contributing to how I was feeling and the life I was experiencing, it blew my mind. And I'm like, I need to share this with the world in some way. Like people need to know that they are so much more powerful than they realize. Absolutely. And, and I love the fact, I know that you're very intuitive and you're very gifted. I want to say even someone like myself, I also started with mindset work because I felt like coming from myself, depression, suicidal, multiple, I have multiple family members that, you know, have very, very interesting mental health experiences. And it's, you're right. It comes down to your thoughts, create your reality, but how do you, but you've learned how to break out of that mindset. And now you're able to empower others with no, really all the power that you need is within you to live the life of your dreams. Yeah. And it's also perfectly normal to have those thoughts that are like 100%. limiting that we like to call them, right? It's yeah. so normal to still have those when you're on this journey. And I'm sharing that because there's a lot of people who are in the coaching space or spiritual development space. And they think, well, once I get to this certain level, I can have it all figured out and I'm never going to have another problem with this again. No. And I was there <laughs> and I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> this is an no. ongoing lifelong thing. <laughs> yes. And I, you, you bring up such a valid point as healers and as intuitive people, even just people in general, we do kind of get this feeling of, well, I've done the healing work. Why isn't this working? Well, no, there's always layers that we can, we're going to go deep down into. And there's, like you said, things are going to pop up. Things are going to almost trigger you or, oh, oh, wait a second. I thought I dealt with this. What do you mean? I still have an issue with money or with this. I, I would imagine you probably see that with yourself and with your clients now. Yeah. I love that you mentioned the money piece because that's so big for so many people. And for myself, as well as my clients, a lot of people think that once they hit a certain number, uh, maybe it's 10K months, 20K yeah. months, then once they hit that number, everything's going to be different with their money situation. And it's not, it doesn't right. change. And I had such a rude awakening because I had this number in my head and I thought, once I see this number in my bank account, I'm going to feel safe with money. I'm going to feel secure and I'm never going to worry about money again. And I would still feel nauseous looking at my numbers and the money was there. I'm like, something is going on here. And that's when I fell in love with money mindset work and the energetics, because it goes so, so deep. 
I love money mindset work because I feel like, and I, and I'm, and for me as a female, and I'm not sure if you experienced this too, it's almost like a dirty thing to talk about that as women, are we not allowed to have large bank accounts? Are we not allowed to be successful? Are we not allowed to call in these huge amounts of money? And for me, it's something I've had to work on year after year after year after year. And it's, I love the fact that you coach people and helping them to break that ceiling, break that glass ceiling, dig in. And it doesn't, and I, I want to ask you this, do you feel like the energetics are the same as like 5k or as a million, as a 10 million, like you've got to like, we have to let level up. But when you haven't done that work, that inner work of, well, when I was five years old, we were told that we were poor and that we had to have scarcity and lack of mindset. And you know what I mean? It's like, you got to dig in, got to dig in. Yeah. There's so much programming that we take on when we're younger. Like I remember watching Dallas when I was a little kid and I was too young to even understand what the show is about, but I got that rich people were bad. Yes. Like they were the bad people on the show. And the same thing I used to watch soap operas at my grandmother's house. And like these people, I'm like, they're living these glamorous, luxurious lifestyles, but they're horrible human beings. Yes. Like, I don't want to be a bad person. <laughs> yeah. I will say that one of my limiting beliefs was people had to cheat to be rich. People yeah. had, to, you know, like, it's like, you yeah. couldn't, you know, and I think also, and, and I know this cause you just shared this on your Instagram. I was peeping on her Instagram this morning. You guys definitely have to check her out. You just said about your money mindset and about your new um, mantras and the more relaxed you are, the easier it is to receive money. And I will tell you that's in the last year for me, I receive with ease. I receive with like, I don't have to hustle. I don't have to always be go, 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 go. Do you find that people are still stuck in that paradigm that you kind of have to help? Like, no, you can have fun. Enjoy your life. Yeah, for sure. Because I think a lot of people grow up believing that the people who work harder are somehow morally better. Like they're the good people, the hardworking people. So they deserve the money. And that's simply not true. Because if that were the case, then the people who work in the fast food industry or construction, they would be billionaires. Right? Exactly. They're doing like really hard work all day. <laughs> that is so, so true. How did you realize that? I mean, because like you said, you worked 16 years with your family, you were always, it sounds like hustling and bustling. And then you were, you got it. I love the fact that you, I secret did the same thing for me. And then I went on to like, um, Christine Rain Sheldon, and then a lot of energetic work. And it, I love the fact that we have similar, like, yeah, like it's like you opened yourself up. How did you get from, cause it is a shift to hustle, hustle, hustle to no, I can receive with grace and ease and have fun. And I don't always have to be on it was so uncomfortable and it's something I still slip into sometimes. Like I remember I would be finished all of my work for my business by 10 AM and the rest of the day, if I didn't have client calls, I was like, oh, what am I going to do with myself all day? Like, this isn't right. And I really had to sit with that discomfort. And what I find to be really helpful is constantly putting the truth in your mind. So whether that's through a documentary or a podcast or mm -hmm. being around mentors and other people who are like, no, it's okay for you to offer value to the world and for you to do your work in the world in a way that feels good and easy for you. And yeah, there's always going to be some sort of work involved, but it doesn't have to be hustle. It doesn't have to be struggle and sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Those are just stories that, that you picked up from somewhere else and chosen to believe is true. So true. And so did you have to tell yourself, do you, do you have to decide I'm no longer going to accept this reality and move into a new one? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I would write it out. Like I make money with ease. The more money, the more fun I have, the more money I make. I remember I was going for a massage. Massages were like my thing. I absolutely love them. And I'd be lying there for like the hour long massage. And I'd be stressing out going, I shouldn't have this easy. This isn't right. And my mind would just be going a mile a minute. And I remember that being sort of like a little turning point going like, I am not available for this anymore. Like I'm so done with this way of thinking. And it's like literally like drawing a line in the mental sand and being like, I am crossing over into the space where I'm just choosing something different because I want to have a different experience. Well, I I give you so much respect because that is something that I, I myself as like a spiritual healer, spiritual person, you know, trying to up level in my own personal career. Like I, I respect that so much because that's something that we all work on on a day to day basis. And I'm like, what do you mean? I'm no longer available for this. What do you mean? I get to decide. What do you mean? Like, and I think that's a programming mindset work of what do you, you know? And it's just like, I love the fact that you help others in, getting to their, their best lives. I mean, it's just, it's fascinating and it's, it's heavy work. I, do you feel like sometimes people discount the, the amount of work mindset work truly is? 
Yeah. I think some people think it's a five minute journaling session in the morning and then they're done with it. And I'm like, well, what about the other like 23 and a half hours of your day? <laughs> like that's where it matters. And what I always remind people of is like, notice how you're being throughout your day. Like at the grocery store, if you want to buy something and let's say it's like romaine lettuce and it's like $4 a head and usually it's $2 a head or something like that. Like, do you buy it anyway? Or are you driving across town to go get gas at a cheaper gas station and spending a half hour out of your day? Like just notice where you're moving into that space of, I don't have enough. Yes. Yes. I will say that in the last year I have moved out of that space because when I used to go to the grocery store and I'd be like, and then, you know, maybe my child wanted this or this. I'm like, Oh, it's too expensive. I'm like, stop. I have enough. I have more than enough. There's always more than enough. Like it's okay. Like it's yeah. such, and it's a hard, I don't know for you, for me. And, and I'd be curious to see how you feel as well. It was, it, it's not easy. I don't want to discount the work because it, some of it is easy, but some of it is heavy and it's hard. And it's like, you, but you have to work through it. Like you said, the 23 and a half hours of the day, like how is your mindset truly, how are you in reality, truly working this out? Because I can say, oh yeah, I, I have, I, I am, and you know, our, our mantras and whatnot. And then it's like, but then when I go to work and I'm like, mm, you know, <laughs> Yeah. It's like going to the gym. Like we can't go to the gym and just do like five bicep curls and be like, woohoo, I'm ripped. It's like, no, it's like a practice. Right. And it gets better. And it's like, it's work, but it's work that you love. It's like, I'm bettering myself. I'm growing. This is like a really good experience for me. Even if when you're in the midst of it, it's like, oh my gosh, this feels like torture. It feels heavy. And there are times where the darkness kind of can, you know, overtake your mind. And I, and I want to go to your side that you had suicidal thoughts. How were you able to kind of cycle out of that because I don't know about you, but what I see, I'm a, I'm a registered nurse. I run a doctor's office in my day job. So I have a lot of patients that come in that, you know, have this kind of heavy mindset and you're just like, Oh my goodness, how did you get out of that way of thinking and know that you could be safe in life and be able to kind of move forward? And you're right. These thoughts do pop up every now and again, but know that you're okay. Yeah. It's constantly, reminding yourself that there's a better option, that there's a different way to think. Because when I was in that space, I really thought that that was the only way to think. I thought the only way I can be is depressed. I'd put myself into this little box and I had like, looking back, there were very specific things I would focus on that made me feel horrible. And then I got to the point where I'm like, I have a choice right now. And I think, I think it was Tony Robbins. It was kind of like the person who helped me the most with that one specific area. And it was just consciously choosing like the better thought consistently, yeah. like over and over and over again, even if you're just like, okay, I've already done this 20 times today, but I'm going to do it again. And you just keep doing that. And then eventually you start rewiring your brain. And this is one thing I love about Joe Dispenza's work. He goes really deep into like, yes. you know, changing things from the, the, that perspective. Yeah. But that's really from what it comes down to. It's from the cellular tissue in your DNA. And then, yeah. because I think people don't realize is that Yes, your thoughts create your reality, but your thoughts also create dis-ease within your body, create this energetic imbalances, you know, that do manifest out into your, into your, I love, I love, I'm like, I love your doggy in the back. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm talking very seriously. And I'm like, oh, cute dog. Um, but no, it's like these moments and these things, they, they embed into our cellular tissue. And like you said, you have to rewire, you have to move the energy. You have to almost retool your entire brain and which then in turn retools your body and all of your energetic layers. And that way your reality of what we have in the real world is what you truly want and desire. And it yeah. comes right out. Yeah. And what I love about this work too, is that even when things don't seem to be going your way, you're a different person moving through those experiences and you navigate through life in a completely different way. Yes, 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 yes. So the, one of the things that you, 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 um, you also are the mindset, witch, and I would love to talk about how did you get into, and I don't know if you, is it your, your magical work? How did you get into your magical work? So that has been, um, 
definitely like an on again, off again thing throughout my life. It started back when I was 14. And before then I used to want to be a nun. I was obsessed with this connection to God. And at the time, Christianity is the only thing that I knew of. And so I would be out in nature. I lived in the country at the time. Mm -hmm. And I would just be like, I want to be a nun and just talk to God all day. (laughs) My mom, she was like, you might want to do something different. (laughs) But then I got into, um, I found a book one time on divination and palmistry and I got into folk magic and it was through folk magic that I discovered Wicca. And at the time that was like something brand new to me. And I was like, oh my gosh, there's people who are really honoring nature and the the seasons. And this really spoke to me. Mm -hmm. And so that was my first introduction to magic and witchcraft. And from there, I bounced back and forth between Christianity and witchcraft, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth for years. And then finally I'm like, okay, if I'm a witch, I just get to do whatever I want because with that path comes complete freedom. There's no dogma, no nothing. There are people who actually call themselves Christian witches. And if that works for them, amazing. Mm -hmm. Like there's, there's no rules with that. And so over the years, I've just followed whatever felt right. And I guess it was, I think last fall, um, I've been going through like a dry season in my spiritual practice. And beforehand, my business was completely centered around witchcraft and magic. And it'd been months. I'm like, this does not feel good anymore because I'm not practicing. And it felt like I was so disconnected from it. And so I did a rebrand. I just focused on business and money mindset. And then when I gave myself the freedom to not put myself into a box, it's like, oh, look at that. I'm back into witchcraft. So now it's sort of, it's, it's like, it can't help, but come through my work. Like I've tried spirituality business, keeping them separate and it just does not work for me. So yeah, yeah, I, there I'm I'm like speechless. I, I feel the same way. I feel like there's no way that you cannot, when you're on this path, it's like, it's almost like a natural progression to blend the two together Because I would imagine that when you're doing your business coaching, you're helping people to, you know, what's your soulmate client? Well, let me help you really like call that in, you know, like it's, let me, it's almost like for me, and I don't know about for you. And I would imagine this is probably the same way. It's like, well, let me supercharge this. All right. You have these thoughts, these desires, these dreams. Well, let's put some energy and some magic behind it and really call it in to help you kind of get to that next level that you're looking for. Yeah. It's like, you have all of these tools at your disposal that, you know, work. And so like, it's like, I need to share this with people. Like if they're open to it, of course. Of course. Well, I mean, like, like being of um, a Wicca and being a, 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 you know, of the nature, like teaching people how to ground themselves, how to energetically Mm. protect themselves. I mean, that goes hand in hand with business. We'll discern whether or not this business client is really for your best and highest good. Like, you know, and, and really go into your intuitive senses and yeah, in business, we definitely have that, but tapping into like your, your intuition, like you do, and also your, your magical work. I mean, it's then like, well, now I, I know there's something's off, don't know what it is, but you know, inside of you, and then, you know, to move forward and trust that guidance. Yeah, exactly. And especially with entrepreneurs, there are a lot of different decisions that you have to make in your business. And what happens for a lot of people is they look outside of themselves, like what strategy is going to work? What's this person doing over here? What's working for them? It's like, go within, like you have all the answers and learning how to hear that voice and trust your intuition is it's priceless in your business. Absolutely. And I want to say this, like, as you're working with entrepreneurs, you probably see people that are like, well, it works for that girl. It works for that gentleman. And they're like, why does it work for me? Well, it's not, you gotta pick a lane. <laughs> you know, we're, we're always trying to um, kind of, you know, it, I, and, I, and I'm guilty of it too. I'm like, well, if I, if I post 17 times a day and if I do this and if I do that and if I didn't, it's like, no, I need to be like in the beginning with ease and flow and tap into my, what is my intuitive guidance within? And what is, you know, my higher self saying to me, like, you're saying you're talking to God. I'm sure you're talking to other beings as well. They're like, Hey, I'm, I'm your spirit guide for your best and highest good for today. Let's go jump, jump in sister. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love that. And then do you ever find, and then you also like, I know that you also do, um, intuitive tarot readings. How did you get into doing, um, tarot readings? So that sort of happened by accident back in the very, very earlier days of my business. I had this service called, um, what was it? It was like revamp your reality ritual or something like that. And at the time I was too afraid to actually talk to someone on a video call. I was so self-conscious. And so I would, um, I would have them 
let me know what they were struggling with the most. And I've tended to work with entrepreneurs right from the beginning. So yeah. it's usually something in their business and they would email me what their issue was. And I would create a PDF guide for them with a ritual, with mindset tools, with sort of like a, yeah. a little formula for them to yeah. better themselves in that area. And what I started doing was asking them permission if I could pull some cards during yeah. this process and read into their energy. And it was just like a little addition. It wasn't an extra cost for them. It was incorporated into that original service. And I remember one client, she's like, I'm reading this and I'm crying. I'm at my desk. I'm crying. This is like, so bang on. I'm like, really? And I had no idea that I was just like, okay, I, this is the message coming through. And I'm like, okay, maybe I'm onto something here. So <laughs> that's where that came from. <laughs> so what you said in the, that uh, perked up my uh, thing, because I was the same way, uh, fear of being seen, fear of being visible. And oh then um, <laughs> how did you work through that? Because as an entrepreneur, I mean, we have these amazing gifts, talents, and abilities, but it's like, oh, but I don't want to go on video. What do you mean I have to do? What do you mean I have to go? You know what I mean? Or just get in front of a group of people. How did you kind of work through that? I forced myself. Yeah. I forced myself too. I remember the very first live stream I did, it was back on Periscope when that was a thing. I love that. You remember Periscope? Yes. <laughs> Oh my gosh. And I thought I was so prepared. I had my bullet points that I was going to talk about. And I had a buddy of mine walk through like a, a trial run to make sure I had the tech stuff set up. I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this live stream. It's going to be amazing. And I get on there and I had all these trolls pop up and I started arguing with them. I completely lost it, like completely lost all control. It was horrible. I got off and my coach at the time, she's messaging me. She's like, are you okay? And like, I need to go have a shower to like get rid of this energy. And then it was either later on the evening or the next day. Uh, I had a little Facebook group at the time and I popped into the Facebook group. I did, um, we didn't have live streams on Facebook then, yeah. but I think I did a video or I talked about it and I'm like, this is what happened to me. I'm going to do this again. And I just kept doing it and doing it and doing it until it didn't scare me anymore. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, I feel like they're waiting for like some magic pill to make the fear go away. It never does. Like you just have to learn how to work with it. One trillion million percent. I will say that that, was, <laughs> that, that definitely was one of my fears as well. One trillion percent. And I forced my, like you said, I was like, I'm just going to do it. I set a time and then I've been consistently ever since then. And I'm like, wow, that really wasn't that big of a deal. There's going to be tech yeah. mishaps. There's going to be trolls. There's going to be people that pop up, but I'm always like, okay, let's see how we navigate this. And we can always reset, recenter. And like you said, take a shower. And then, <laughs> <laughs> because probably for you, you have this big <laughs> mission inside of you that, you know, you've got to get to the world and get to the planet because you, you are helping people to change their mindsets, to change their reality, to no, you don't have to be disempowered. Let me show you how to live the life of your dreams. And these are the tools, but you got to be visible in order to get your message out there. You know? Yeah, for sure. And I always had a call to do video, but I was, I was just terrified. So it was like, it felt aligned, but also there was that fear there. And that's another thing. Sometimes people think, well, if I'm feeling a lot of fear, it's probably really not meant for me. It's like, mm, check in with that. Cause that might not always be true. Mm. You know what I say to people is that fear is the same feeling as excitement. So fear and, yeah. and excitement are the same thing. So is it really fear or are you excited? And then I, I will say, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. Even starting this interview with you today, I was nervous and I was excited and I'm like, ah, but you know, we push through and we do it <laughs> <laughs> because I, I just think you're an amazing person and you just have so many gifts and abilities that you're sharing with other people that it's just, it's phenomenal. And I, and I love the fact that you, you kind of went through some darkness to get to where you are now and you're proof positive of, yeah, if you put your mind to it and you truly want to dig in, reclaim the power within, then you can move forward in your life. I love that. Do you have any, and, like, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, so I was just kidding. Life is so short. Like it is so, so short, like not to be morbid, but none of us know when our last day is. And to see people living a life that they don't actually want to be living because they think it's like what they should do. Like, that's why I do what I do. Like it breaks my heart to see people in that position. So yes. I feel we all deserve to have a life that lights us right up. And look at what we just went through with COVID and everybody being isolated and business shutting down and, you know, kind of really, 
I don't know about you, but it's forced me to be like, no, if I'm not happy in what I'm doing, then I don't need to be doing it. And I need to yeah. look for something that brings me joy within and not, oh, well, you got to hustle and bustle and be nine to five and always be part of the corporate ladder and scale and scale and scale. Because like you said, in the beginning, that's a mindset programming, you mm -hmm. know, have you found a lot of your clients that have shifted from like nine to five to like being really like powerful entrepreneurs? Yeah. And sometimes that transition is a little bit challenging. Yeah. Um, some people just want to like flick the switch and boom, start their business, but it brings up a lot of internal stuff. Like there's a lot of safety and security in a nine to five. Even if you don't like your job, you don't like your coworkers, letting go of the safety net of a regular paycheck and doing things on your own can be really scary for a lot of people. But I feel that's one thing too, that the last few years have shown people that their day jobs aren't always as stable and secure as they think they are. So why not take a risk on yourself and do what you love? Absolutely. I mean, how many people were furloughed or their business to shut down or, I mean, it was, it was, it was kind of, um, it was an interesting time. Like, and I feel like, I mean, I don't know about you, but I feel like we still have like collective energy that we have to clear through with what, we, what, and we're still going through it now. I mean, I feel like we're still going through it now. I don't know about, well, I, I'm a, I run a doctor's office. So of course I still see it. <laughs> I'm like, what's COVID? This is, what, this is my new joke is that, uh, you know, the president who said the pandemic's over. Now that's our new joke at the office. We're like, well, the pandemic's over, but we just saw, it's like so silly. It's like, why would you say that? But anyway, I do feel like there was a lot of fear associated with it and, you know, like not trusting our own bodies and not trusting our own immune systems. And, you know, like, come on guys, like we're powerful. We're powerful beings that can overcome things. I, so do you still follow the raw food diet? I know I'm jumping topics here. Do you still follow that? No, I did. I would follow it uh, usually once a year around mm -hmm. February, March when that hit. And I would do it for probably like two weeks or so. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like a detox thing. Yeah. And then a few years ago, I started with it again. I was getting the the desire to move in that yeah. direction. And a couple of days in, I'm like, this just isn't my thing anymore, like at all. And so it's one of those, if I've ever called to eat yeah. that way again for whoever many weeks or months that I'll do it. But right now it's not my thing. Do you ever feel like, do you ever feel like with that was like a spiritual thing to like up level your body and up level your system almost like, okay, we got to detoxify some of these things. And then I'm, I'm a, I'm a clear channel. I definitely noticed a difference at the time before I started eating that way, I was living on processed foods and junk yeah. food. And I was in my early twenties. I had really high metabolism. So I never like, Oh, I feel fine. I feel healthy. I'm, yeah. you know, I look fine. Um, and so I would eat absolute trash. And then once I started eating raw foods, I'm like, Oh my gosh, it's like <laughs> the world looks different. Everything is different now because I've cleared all of this stuff. Everything's shiny guys. <laughs> yeah. Everything sparkles. I, I do. Wanna, I love that because I, I feel like I've I've noticed with some clients that they're saying that they they're feeling called to kind of shift their diet and you know and it's it, but it's also I think a personal choice. Like some people may thrive and do well on you know I, like I is, it, is there like a breathitarian like breath I couldn't do that I need food yeah like. <laughs> It's never going to work for me. Sorry. I'm like, I'm just thinking guys, you can tell Rachel's brain is like, no, never going to happen. I, like <laughs> I, I, it's all in good thought, but I'll bless my food. I will put the energetic intention that I'm blessing my food. Cause I know that will make it be a high vibration. <laughs> what about these Oreos guys? Bless them. God loves them. <laughs> Eat as many as you want. They're blessed now. They're fine. Listen, no calories. Okay. <laughs> we got a direct line to God. All right. God said, I'm just kidding. <laughs> working with, um, so do you work, do you find yourself working with, like I currently right now, I find myself working with more, um, like with Bridget, I'm looking at my stuff with Freya. I, I find myself kind of finding these like really powerful goddesses that are coming into my work. And I know that you said you, you, you're kind of, you've drifted back into your witch, your witchcraft. Do you find that you're working with more like, like goddesses or, or whoever type of beings? Uh, right now I'm working with a mentor actually, and he's helping me connect with planetary energies, which is brand new to me. Super oh. fun. Like I just started like a week ago. So it's very fresh, very new. Listen, um, friend. <laughs> Let's talk about planetary energies. You've met the gal. 
go ahead. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you mean Lemuria? Do you mean Palladia? Do you mean Arcturians? Do you mean... <laughs> I knew I had to connect with you for a reason. Oh it was meant to be. <laughs> oh, I love that. Do you find that as you're connecting to the um, planetary guides that you're learning more light language and different soul languages? Oh, I haven't noticed that yet. I feel like I'm still kind of like, I got like my training wheels on and yeah. I was kind of getting down to like the ritual work that he has me doing and kind of getting in the flow with things. Oh, it's going to be a whole different, I'm so, I'm, guys, I'm so, I'm so, I'm very excited for Kelly. <laughs> Because more planetary guides are coming to us. So, and it's just, it's, it's phenomenal work because I feel like they bring us this, like this deeper mindset. Do you find that like, it brings you more powerful mindset work? Oh no, I lost my internet. Hold on. 